On the night of May 31st, 2009, one of the most mysterious disasters in aviation began to unfold. A modern airliner, an experienced crew, and a sudden deadly fall into the Atlantic Ocean. This is the story of Air France Flight 447. At around 8 p.m. local time, Air France Flight 447 was pushed back from the gate at Rio de Janeiro International Airport, Brazil. Its destination was Paris, France, a transatlantic journey of about 12 hours. The route would take the plane from South America, across the equator, over the middle of the Atlantic Ocean, and toward the European mainland before arriving in Paris. The aircraft was an Airbus A330-200, a wide-body passenger jet designed for long-haul travel. It was one of the newest in the airline's fleet and had undergone a major inspection just weeks earlier in April 2009. By the day of the flight, it had flown about 19,000 hours. It was powered by two General Electric CF6 engines, and there were no known technical issues before departure. On board were 216 passengers and 12 crew members. They came from nearly 30 different countries, with the largest groups from France, Brazil, and Germany. The passengers included business travelers, tourists, and people returning home. The cockpit was staffed by three pilots because of the long duty time. The captain, aged 58, had nearly 11,000 hours of flying experience with more than 1,700 hours on the A330. The relief first officer, aged 37, had over 6,000 hours in the air, most of them on the A330. The second first officer, aged 32, had almost 3,000 hours of flight time, though only 87 hours on this aircraft type. Takeoff from Rio was smooth and uneventful. The aircraft climbed steadily and followed its planned route. At about 20,000 feet, the relief first officer left the cockpit for his scheduled rest break, the captain moved to the left seat, and the first officer sat in the right seat. The aircraft continued climbing to its cruising altitude of 35,000 feet. For the first part of the flight, everything was normal. But at 1.35 a.m., the plane entered oceanic airspace over the Atlantic. This part of the world is known as the Intertropical Convergence Zone, a belt of low pressure where warm, moist air from both hemispheres meets, creating frequent thunderstorms and heavy rain. These storms are challenging for pilots because at night they can be hard to see, and their radar signature isn't always clear. The crew monitored the onboard weather radar. They saw an area of bad weather ahead and discussed climbing to 37,000 feet to try to fly above it. However, the warm air temperature at their altitude meant the climb would be difficult, so they stayed at 35,000 feet. At 2 a.m., the relief first officer returned from his rest and the captain left for his. The two first officers adjusted the radar sensitivity to get a better view of the storms and turned the aircraft 12 degrees left to avoid the worst of the weather. Soon after, the plane flew into an updraft. Ice crystals began striking the fuselage, a common sound when flying through high-altitude clouds. Normally, this isn't a serious problem, but in high enough concentrations, the ice can block the pitot tubes. These are small sensors that measure the plane's airspeed by comparing the pressure of moving air against still air. The Airbus A330 has three of them one for each pilot and one backup. When all three pitot tubes iced over, they could no longer measure airspeed correctly. The readings dropped sharply from 275 knots to 139 knots in just a few seconds. The autopilot disconnected, the flight director displays disappeared, and the aircraft switched from normal law to alternate law, a backup mode that removes many of the protections that normally help keep the aircraft stable, such as limits on pitch, bank angle, and stall prevention. Now flying manually, one of the first officers raised the nose slightly and made roll adjustments. At the same time, the auto thrust system switched off, locking the engine power at 83%. The pitch angle increased to 6 degrees and the plane began climbing at almost 1,800 feet per minute. The stall warning sounded. A stall in aviation means the wings are no longer producing enough lift to keep the aircraft flying, usually because the nose is too high and the airflow over the wings is disrupted. If not corrected quickly, a stall can lead to a rapid loss of altitude. The pilots made alternating roll inputs, at times overcorrecting in one direction and then the other. After about 30 seconds, the roll stabilized and the stall warning briefly stopped. But seconds later, the airspeed dropped again. The pitch increased further and the stall warning returned. A 
attempts were made to call the captain back to the cockpit. The aircraft kept climbing, reaching nearly 38,000 feet, 3,000 feet higher than before the incident began. At that altitude, the plane could no longer maintain enough lift at its slow speed. The descent began at a rate of 10,000 feet per minute. When the captain returned, the situation was already critical. The airspeed indicators briefly dropped below 60 knots, causing the stall sensors to stop working and silencing the warning for a short time. The aircraft banked sharply to the right, reaching up to 45 degrees before the pilots managed to reduce it. With valid airspeed readings restored, the stall warning sounded again. The speed brakes were briefly deployed and then retracted. The nose lowered slightly but quickly went back to a nose-up attitude. The descent continued at very high rates, sometimes up to 15,000 feet per minute. At around 20,000 feet, the thrust levers were pushed forward to maximum power. The wings leveled briefly before rolling again. Both first officers were moving their controls at the same time, which caused a dual input alert. Altitude dropped past 10,000 feet, then 4,000 feet, with the nose still raised. At about 2,500 feet, the ground proximity warning activated. The pilots pulled back and applied maximum thrust, but it was too late. At 2.14 a.m. UTC, Air France Flight 447 struck the ocean. All 228 people on board were killed. When the flight failed to make contact with air traffic control, search and rescue operations began. The remote location and lack of radar coverage made finding the wreckage difficult. Two days later, debris and an oil slick were spotted. In the following days, bodies and floating wreckage were recovered. The main wreckage was not found until April 2011. Almost two years later, lying nearly 4,000 meters below the surface. The flight data and cockpit voice recorders were recovered and examined. The investigation found that the loss of airspeed readings due to pitot tube icing led to the autopilot disconnecting. The sudden change in control mode at cruise altitude caught the pilots off guard. The loss of Flight 447 is a powerful reminder of how quickly problems can escalate in flight and how vital preparation, awareness and teamwork are in keeping passengers and crew safe.